Hey everybody, it's Zach again at NewTutorial.com. Making a video tonight. I have had uh, in the last week an interesting um, uh, back and forth with a, a fellow by the name of John Mark Harris. Now, um, the reason I'm making this video is not to address John Mark Harris, but I want to address other people who are out there who may know John Mark Harris. You see, John Mark Harris is a pastor, an associate pastor of a church that's in my area. And recently, he found me. He found me and posted on my website uh, as a comment on one of the things that had to do with the three days and three nights, uh, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Messiah. And uh, he disagreed with the point of view that was being established on my website. And uh, he gave a whole list of examples of why. And I absolutely refuted him. And I was delighted that he posted because um, I don't normally get a lot of uh, back and forth with people who disagree. They just either ignore me or they, they don't know how to, uh, you know, converse. They just, they're not comfortable with that. But here was a here was a gentleman who came on my website and and took the time to refute some of the things I was saying. And uh, obviously, I disagree with him, and I told him why back. And so I thought maybe there's going to be some open dialogue here. Um, and so with a little more back and forth, I, I was trying to get him and invited him on my channel so we could uh, do a video. Um, you know, I have software. We've done this before where I have uh, me with my webcam and someone else with their webcam and do some little back and forth and, and, and let's go through the scripture and talk about it and see where we disagree and let people out there decide for themselves uh, what they think uh, based on what scriptures that we've presented. Uh, he didn't want to do that and that really made me uh, sad because I mean, I mean here's a guy who comes on my site and puts forth his, his rebuttal to my point. Okay, great. Now let's go back and forth. Let's have a little dialogue. But he didn't want. To, he wanted to stop it there. Uh, he didn't want to go any further. I said, I, 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 "Come on, you know what? Uh, if I'm wrong, let's talk about it. Let's see the scriptures. Let's see what the scriptures say and uh, discuss it and do it openly so everyone can see." Um, John Mark Harris. The more I've learned about him, does not like open debate. He does not like an open forum where people can see his argument versus somebody else. What he likes to do is respond and that be the end of it. And uh, that's the end of the dialogue. Well, that's not really a dialogue. You can have your own opinion, but let's see what happens when your opinion comes up against somebody else's. Anyway, so the reason I'm making this video is because he first found me and I wanted to respond uh, after he basically closed the door on any further dialogue and, and uh, refused to come on my channel and refused to openly uh, talk about this in a public forum. So I'm titling this video, John Mark Harris, Maryville Baptist, because that's the church where he is, he's a part of. And that way, anytime someone searches for John Mark Harris or Maryville Baptist in Google search engines or Yahoo, whatever, it'll come up. And that way people can see that John Mark Harris has refused to have this open dialogue uh, with me after he first started uh, the post on my website. And uh, he, he didn't want to go, go any further. So fine, great, wonderful. What we're going to do now is I'm going to refute some of the things that he put in a, in a recent video uh, talking about the Ten Commandments and, and Jesus and how the, the Old Testament relates to Jesus and, and what do we do with this law, uh, these, these commandments. And so uh, this Old Testament, is it relevant still when we have Jesus today? And uh, I want to go through a number of verses. But before I do that, I want to read a quote that I got off one of his audio links on his website. This is what John Mark Harris said off of his website. In an audio clip, and I'll read it to you here. On June 13th, 2010, John Mark Harris said the following, quote, We should constantly be looking at God's word and testing it against, or testing our lives against it, and changing where we see a thing that needs to be changed, because that's really one of the points the Apostle Paul tells us of Scripture is for us to change. There it is. Now I'm going to quote it again, and I'm going to add some commentary. So, quote, we should constantly be looking at God's law, God's word, and testing it against, er, testing our lives against it. Okay, stop. Testing your lives against what? God's word. Well, what is God's word to someone who's in the New Testament? Because remember, at the times of the New Testament, there is no New Testament. It's not written yet. It's not being disseminated yet. The Gospels are not, you know, on every bookshelf at the, at the corner Bible store. Okay, so when, some, when the Bereans were examining Scripture to see what Paul was saying was true, what Scriptures were they examining? The Torah, uh, the prophets. Uh, that's what they were examining. And when we're testing our lives against Scripture, 
testing our lives against God's word. We're testing our lives against what the Bible calls righteousness and wickedness, sin and being holy and unholy. The, the commandments of God tell us what is sin and what is not. It's as simple as that. And so, yeah, John Mark Harris is right. We should be constantly looking at God's Word and testing it. We should be testing our lives against it to make sure that we are living righteously. And if we're not following the commandments in the Old Testament, we're not living righteously. Um, so here you go. Here it is, right here. John Mark Harris says, you know, we should be constantly testing our lives against it. Well, the it is God's Word, and that God's Word is is the Torah. It's the Ten Commandments. Uh, and it says changing where we see a thing that needs to be changed. Well, the only way you're going to see things in your life that need to be changed is by going back to that Word, going back to that Old Testament, going back to that Torah, that law, those instructions to see how we are to live our lives. And if we're not living our lives the way it says, then we need to change and adjust. And that's really what he says. He says, Paul tells us of Scripture is for us to change. That's the point of the Apostle Paul is making, he says. And so, yeah, I agree. We need to change and get our lives right with Scripture because the Scriptures tell us how to live. It tells us how to live righteously. And if we're not living righteously, it's saying that we're, wi we're living wickedly. Um, anyway, so let's go on to this video. He made this video uh, just not too long ago. He put it on his website. And the first verse he comes to is Matthew 5.17. Matthew 5, 17, let's read this verse and let's talk about it a little bit. It says, Think not I am come to abolish the law or the prophets. I am not come to abolish, but to fulfill. And so it says right here, this is proof text that the, the Messiah came to fulfill the came to fulfill the law. The law is no longer needed. He didn't come to abolish it, but he came to fulfill it, which basically means the same thing to John Mark Harris that it, it means to abolish because it doesn't really have any more meaning in our lives. The important thing here he's, that I noticed when he did this video is that John Mark Harris stopped at this verse, at Matthew 5.17. He went no further. But what I'm going to do today with you is I'm going to show you the next two verses in this text because it, it helps to, to read things in context. You see, in this video, he actually uh, uh, accuses people of doing exactly what he does in his own video, and that's picking verses out of context. We need to read verses in context. Let's read the next two verses here. Matthew 5, 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. And let's read the next verse. In verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoso, whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So is the law done away with? Here, right here, it's telling you that those who break the least of these commandments, who break the least of the Torah, the law, are going to be called least in the kingdom. But those who do and teach them are going to be called great. Though that world's two words right there you see, do and teach, those are action words, folks. You can't have those words and not have, they're action, they're filled with action to do something and to teach something. That's to do and to teach the commandments, the law of God, the Torah of God. Now, I know we can't keep all of Torah right now. We have no priestly system. We have no temple set up. And for, quite frankly, Scripture tells us that our Messiah is our high priest in the order of Melchizedek, uh, something that's also referenced in the Old Testament, especially in Zechariah 12.10. So what we're, what we're seeing here right now is that, but still, the Torah is important. The law is important. And there is much of the law that Christianity keeps already and doesn't even know it. Uh, most of the Torah, Christianity keeps just regardless because they know things are right and wrong. We know certain things are right. We know certain things are wrong because the Holy Spirit is living inside of us and tells us that. The problem is we've had Christianity over the last 1,700 years tell us that this stuff doesn't matter and it's getting watered down more and more and more. And the result you look around the world today is you have a world filled with lawlessness, all kinds of lawlessness. Sin is so prevalent in our society today because we have no idea, again, again what, what, what sin is. Well, 1 John 3, 4 tells us what sin is. Sin is transgression of the law. Well, what does it say here in Matthew 5, 17? It says right here, it says, Think not, I am come to abolish the law or the prophets. I am not come to abolish, but to fulfill. And then the next verse, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, 
one jot or one tittle show in no wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. And then in verse 19, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Folks, it's pretty simple. (laughs) We're to do and teach the law of God. That's the Torah, the commandments, not just the Ten Commandments. There's no such thing as moral law and ceremonial law. You might have people like John Mark Harris and some of these others out there who will tell you, well, that's moral law or that's ceremonial law. Folks, don't buy into that. Don't be caught up in it. You, if you search your Bible, we live in today an area, uh, 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 an age of Bible software. You can pick up, you can get free Bible software on the internet. Search the Bible software that you have and search for a phrase called moral law or ceremonial law. You won't find it. There's no such thing as moral law and ceremonial law anywhere in your Bible. These are phrases that theologians have made up because they understand they're up against a rock and a hard place. They have to make something up in order to keep selling their paradigm of lawlessness. He then goes on to quote Ephesians. And in Ephesians 2.15 He quotes this verse, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself a twain of one new man, so making peace. He says right here, he's John Mark Harris makes the point that abolished does in fact mean abolished and that this means that the law of commandments are done away with. The word that he doesn't even mention in his video and doesn't go into at all is the word enmity in this verse. Enmity, what does that word mean? It, it's really important that we look this up. The word enmity, if you look it up in a concordance or in a dictionary, means ill will or hatred or animosity. That's what enmity means. It means wrath, God's wrath, the enmity, the animosity of God. And that's, what's, that's what it's being talked about here. So what it's saying here is having abolished in his flesh the hatred, the ill will, the animosity, the enmity even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself a twain of one new man, so making peace. Folks, what was gotten rid of here was the ordinances, the the tickets, the punishment for breaking God's law. Because when you break God's law, that's called sin. What does 1 John 3, 4 tell us? It tells us sin is transgression of the law. That's what sin is. It's transgressing the law. And so when you see right here, it says the enmity, the hatred, uh, that's what happens when you break the law. You have God's wrath come upon you. That's why we're all condemned. That's why we need a Messiah, because we've all broken God's law. And that's what Messiah, Jesus the Christ, did for us on the cross. He came and he died and he took that sin. He took that enmity upon himself, that hatred of the Father upon himself that we deserve, not him. And so that's what was nailed to the cross. The ordinances, the things that we broke, the commandments we broke, the law doesn't go away. Folks, if you go out and you run a red light in your town and you get pulled over by a police officer and he issues you a ticket and you go and you pay the fine for that ticket, you're now free from the law. The curse of the law is no, no longer holds dominion over you. But if you walk out of that courtroom, are you then allowed to go and run red lights again? Of course not. That'd be silly. That's crazy. But uh, what you've been freed from, that what you have been freed from now is the curse, the, the punishment that law brings. You're free from that. But you are still under the law. You are still under the, the law of, of the traffic laws in your town. You are, still, you are still supposed to abide by those laws. It's as simple as that. We are still to abide by the instructions the Father gives us to live our lives. The, the punishment that we deserve for breaking these laws uh, The Messiah took on himself and is done away, but the law remains. It is not abolished. He fulfilled it, meaning he gave us an example to follow. He walked it out perfectly. Okay, let's move on to this next verse that he totally ignores. He mentions 2.15 and uses this as proof text that abolished is abolished, but he totally doesn't mention this one. For we are his workmanship, Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2.10. What's he saying here? Good works ordained that we should walk in? How is that possible? What works could he be talking about, John Mark Harris? 
good works that are ordained? How about the good works that are ordained in the Torah, in the Old Testament, the laws, the instructions of God? Those were the good works that were ordained. Those are what's considered good works uh, that are ordained and that we are to walk in. Because what is John? Uh, First John uh, was it? First uh, John two six. It says, you know, we are to walk after He walked. How did He walk? How did Yeshua? How did Jesus, our Messiah? Uh, Jesus the Christ, how did he walk? He walked perfectly in those ordinances, in those good works. Uh, that's what he did. He, he walked perfectly. In this video in, that he did, he also mentioned Colossians. He talked about Colossians 2.16. And let's read this verse. This was in an audio segment he did also on his website. And I'm going to address this because I think it's very important. He says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of a new moon or of the Sabbath days. Colossians 2.16. Well, it looks very clear right here that, you know, he's saying, let no man judge you, therefore, in meat or in drink, in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or the Sabbath. It looks pretty clear that we aren't supposed to keep these things anymore. These are the old Jewish traditions that, that they did back then. But first of all, we need to understand that these were not Jewish. The commandments of God were given to all of Israel, which was all 12 tribes. The Jewish tribe was only one, and that was from the tribe of Judah, or the, 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 the house of Judah, which being the southern kingdom, consisting of only the tribe of Judah and Benjamin. So this is right here. These are not Jewish feasts. These are not Jewish traditions. These were God's feast, uh, God's holy days, God's Sabbath days that he says were his and that we were to keep forever throughout all generations. And it says, even in Colossians 2.8, we need to understand the context of what this Colossians 2.16 verse is talking about. It says right here in Colossians 2.8, the traditions of men. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. The whole context of Ephesians 2 is talking about, or I'm sorry, Colossians 2 is talking about the traditions of man. The traditions of man. Let's look at this next verse. Here in verse 22, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. That's what the whole context of Colossians 2.22 is about. You see, these people were living in Colossa, Turkey, southwestern Turkey. They were not living in Judea. They did not have a bunch of Jews coming up to them and saying, hey, you need to keep the Sabbath. Hey, you need to keep the feast days. Hey, you need to stop eating pork. No, they were living in a pagan society. It was these pagans who were coming up to them and saying, why are you keeping these Sabbath days? Why are you keeping these feast days? And so Paul was saying, don't let anybody judge you for keeping these not for, don't let anybody judge you for not keeping them. You have it reversed, John Mark Harris. You have it completely backwards. It's don't let anybody judge you for keeping the feast days. Don't let, don't let anybody judge you for not, uh, for, for, for not eating uh, things that the Father calls unclean. That's what this whole thing in Colossians 2 is, is talking about. We need to understand uh, that people have reversed a lot of the writings of Paul. They don't understand what Paul is saying here. Because clearly in Colossians 2, it's talking about the commandments and doctrines of men, not the commandments and doctrines of God. What did, Mar what did our Messiah, Jesus, say in Mark 7? He is saying, and you are putting aside the commandments uh, of God for the traditions and doctrines of man. All throughout our New Testament, it talks against the commandments and doctrines of man, the traditions and doctrines of man, because they were putting them aside. They were putting God's commandments aside to follow man's commandments, and that's not what the Father wants us to do. So ask yourself, are we doing this today? Are we following the traditions and, and doctrines of man? Where in your Bible do you see people celebrating Christmas? Where in the Bible do you see people celebrating Easter? You don't see that. In fact, you see in your New Testament over and over again examples of people following the feast days, the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Pentecost, Shavuot, or the Feast of Passover and Unleavened Bread. Those are the feasts that you see the people in the New Testament keeping over and over again. But today we don't do that. We keep things like Halloween, trunks for treats, and all these things that are traditions and doctrines of man. Why do we do these things? Um, I understand that there's been a huge awakening at Maryville Baptist Church. A lot of people have woke up out there, and uh, they're starting reading their Bibles. It's not that they were listening to a man or a woman or, or a video series or, or a booklet or a pamphlet. No, they started opening their Bible and reading it for themselves. And that's very dangerous in the world of traditions and doctrines of man because people start to realize what the Father really said, and they're looking around and saying, we're not doing any of this. 
and I want to do only what the Father says. Folks, John Mark Harris has an open invitation to come on my, my channel anytime he wants to. I really hope he does. I really hope he takes advantage of coming on here, talking about Scripture, but I doubt that he will. He's already stated over and over again with me pleading with him on Twitter uh, to come on my channel and to have an open debate that he doesn't have time, that he's too busy with his uh, students and, and all the other stuff he does, but he had time to come on my website and post. I'd never even heard of John Mark Harris before this. I didn't know who he was. But obviously he found me somehow. Listen, I'm a former Southern Baptist. I was raised, I have my, I was in the military. I, w I was raised in the Baptist church. I was, um, uh, grew up in youth group, um, went away to the military, went off to college. The entire time at college, I, I was still going to church. That's where I met my wife at Parkway Baptist Church in Orlando, Florida. Uh, she was working for Wycliffe Bible Translators there. And uh, and, and, and we got married and uh, we're both very strong in the faith, but we started reading our Bible one day, and we realized this isn't what we're, what we're supposed to be doing, uh, because the Bible is doing is saying something different than what our traditions are saying. I, I mean, I have here, right here, you can see my dog tag. I mean, this is my dog tag from when I was in the Army. I was served in the United States Infantry. See, it's right there. It says Southern Baptist Convention. Southern Baptist Convention, right there, folks. I, I've been in the Baptist... Uh, uh, denomination my entire life. I grew up Baptist, Southern Baptist. And, uh, I mean, I started reading my Bible one day. I, I was a teacher at, uh, at a Baptist church in my hometown. Um, and then, I, I, like I said, I started reading my Bible one day, and I realized what we were doing was not, what we're doing is not in the Scriptures. What's in the Scriptures is not what we're doing. And, and I wanted to get right with the Father. And so um, people think I'm weird because I have a beard or whatever, or I have a menorah in the back or something like that. I mean, listen, I'm just I'm just trying to obey my my heavenly Father and what He says, and I don't want to do things that He calls an abomination. I want to do things that He says I, that that I should be doing, like the feast that are, that are full of um, joy and, and happiness, and 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 avoid some of these things like in Jeremiah 10. It talks about Christmas. I don't want to do these things that offend the Father. But uh, I just want to let you know where I'm coming from, uh, the people of Maryville Baptist. I'm sure some people are going to find this video because it's going to show up on the search engines. And I really do hope uh, that uh, John Mark Harris will reconsider coming on my channel and debating this and openly talking about it because uh, it ain't going away. Folks, this is not going away. The Father is waking up his people. He's waking up his his bride, uh, and, and they're making sure their garments have no spot or wrinkle, and they're not going to continue doing uh, what he calls sin. And the sin, the, the profane is the opposite of, of, of holy. His people, his people aren't going to keep doing that. And so what we've, what's happening here is just not going to go away. Anyway, so um, listen, I really uh, I hope you've found this video informative. If you go to Maryville Baptist, uh, please show your friends this video and uh, ask, your, ask your pastors the hard questions. Ask them the tough questions. See what they say. If you go to a different church, ask them the tough questions. Uh, if it, just not Maryville Baptist, but any church. And, and like I said, I do hope John Mark Harris will come on my channel, and I'll just leave it at that. So all right, that's it. Go home, read your Bible. Thanks.